day of divine pictures. They are divine pictures. In the sound, Vaishnava he can see with the ear, says so. Many pictures are coming into your inside by sound. But then there's also very many pictures in the form of graphic pictures. All these are very graphic, amazingly graphic. So pictures and forms are really an important part. And there's another one, actually most important, Those are the mental pictures, the reflections, the recollection. Let me offer my most humble obeisance unto Srila Prabhupada, who is the giver of all the divine pictures, and the divine sounds, and the divine tastes, and the divine association, in other words, we want to create some pictures in the kitchen. First I go, Alibol. So, this is the world of pictures, Krishna pictures. We used to call them the windows to the spiritual world. And you see them. Sometimes the Acharyas supervise pictures themselves, like Prabhupada he did. He told the original Iskon artists, Shamarani, he said, no, no, Arjuna is not like this. Krishna is more like this. You have to paint like this. He was giving detailed description of how the pictures should look. What the Panchatatva should look like. In other words, he revealed to us, just like the deities, they are made by the experts in India, great craftsmen, it's a lot, it's a big science of making deities. It's not like everybody does whatever they, they think. Maybe some, some special developments are there, just like when I found the deity in Mallorca, it was a deity which was so uncommon that I've never seen it in my life. I've not seen this type of deity, not from Vindavan, not from Puri, not from Mayapur. It must be from South India, from somewhere, because it was so unique, but it was very obviously rather going that he Kishore, Kishore, as we call it. So the images the pictures in the Vaishnava cultures. You listen to the to the holy message. You listen to it. And what does it say in this message? It says Krishna plays food, Krishna is dancing with the gopis, Krishna is on the Yamuna, Krishna is caressing the cow, Krishna is smiling sweetly, Krishna is everybody's friend, Krishna is hiding from the gopis, then uh, Radharani is uh, looking for, for him. And sometimes Radharani is upset and is hiding from Krishna, and then Krishna is going after Radha. So many stories, and there are so many pictures, so many wonderful images. They become meditations, they become, they become inner video. Like, look, Brahma, Brahma in the Shima Bhagavatam says, first shloka, that the Lord appeared to Brahma in, within his heart. He like 
had gave him a view and insight to see what's going on in the spiritual world. Tene Brahmadida Yadi Kaviyim Yanti Atsuraya. He gave him an insight, and now you look at this. Great devotees, they can see different pastimes taking place inside their heart. This is called smaranam. <coughs> smaranam or the process of recollection by divine guidance. In their hearts, <coughs> hearts, they're diving deeply into this Krishna Lila. Just like one song which Prabhupada used to sing every day. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunya Vihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunya Vihari Upi Janta Vallava Representative of 
participate in some service. So I can say definitely you are our representative of Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada helping me to continue his mission. Hey, could you get those pictures? Uh, it's a, a bit difficult. We should get help from somebody who knows and then we should get those pictures to show. I have not seen them myself. I only read what, what they said about the disaster. So, the pictures of Krishna each and every picture tells a story. That's why there's a famous saying that says, a picture tells 1,000 words. I mean, the pictures, the, the, the windows to the spiritual world, when you go through the books of Prabhupada, when you see all the beautiful pictures in the Krishna book, when you see the other books in the picture in the Bhagavatam, when you see the pictures in the Chaitanya, Charitamrita, and afterwards so many more pictures have been painted in the lineage of Prabhupada. I mean, really, really beautiful pictures. There were many. In the beginning, there were, there were good painters, undoubtedly, but later on, such amazing Russian painters joined. Uh, and they made some like and they made some of those museum pictures like in New Delhi Iskar. It is such an art, such a piece of art, it's unbelievable, just absolutely magnificent. And they were supervised by my friend Bhaktisiddhanta Das, who was working with sixty Russian artists, sixty. They were painting all the beautiful frescoes and museum pieces, everything. So when it comes to Krishna art and the windows to the spiritual world, you can only go like this. Oh. Now, another friend of mine, Janardan, he's a, he, he's a, he's a Italian fresco painter. He just installed, I put it up on Vina. If you're a Vina reader, then you know what I'm talking about. He made the Mahabharata paintings. He, the whole, uh, funnily, 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 the castle of Conde Machiavelli, which is in in Firenze, in 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 Florence, that was purchased by the devotees long time ago. Now they made it into a Mahabharata art gallery. <laughs> Machiavelli, he doesn't know what good luck has come to him. That, and if you see those paintings on the Mahabharata made by Janakran, uh, you cannot believe it. They are so realistic, and their paintings are like the size of a whole wall. I mean, the, the big, big. It's all the the whole castle was filled with the Mahabharata exhibit. No. Krishna art, Krishna's pictures in the spiritual world, they just go, you know, they just go to drive you mad. They're, they're totally like the classics, like Rubens and Hals, Franz Hals, and the, like, like the, the, these painters of El Greco, uh, or The hell descriptions. Ah, uh, yes, anonymous portion. I mean, those paintings these people are making are on that level, you know, topmost painting level capacity. And it's just pulling out, you know. If you go everywhere, you go to India, every temple is full of art. We just gave our Daria award to Tarak Chand one of the great artists. And Tarek Chant is the, is the brother of Radh Raman. And Radh Raman is the biggest and most expert deity maker. So forms, divine forms, Krishna becomes visible by the hands and by the eyes of the devotees. Like amazing, amazing. Like one time 
my god brother Siddha Swarupananda, he had a, he had a, uh, a Nishinga they have painted, very softly, Nishinga they were with Prahlad, so, so lovingly and so softly, so it's like this, you know. The devotees, the Krishna reveals himself through the devotees in so different ways. Hmm? So different. But there's also the Ugra Mishinga. Hmm? Mishinga is furious. And he tears Hiranyakashipu to pieces and pulls out the intestines. Uh, you know, in India they worship Ugra Nishinga, Yoga Nishinga, Lakshmi Nishinga, and Prahlad Nishinga. There's like four, four different moods of Nishinga. Uh, so, this Lord Nishinga is just amazing. He's absolutely loving and he's also absolutely furious. <laughs> In Krishna art, in Krishna love, all these things are contained. You can meditate in Lord Vishnu, you can meditate in Brigham Muni. So many different types of face. I just got some work from Switzerland about uh, the latest children book we are making. Uh, if you bring the drawings on my, my desk, just some lot latest, and then we have the Krishna art, which is uh, which was made by the little Krishna, which is a different art, a three-dimensional art, which they made in the South Indian studios of Acharya in the in the in the end. Whoever sees this, he feels very charmed. It's such an elegant way of. Glorifying Krishna's sleep. I am simply amazed by the pictures of Krishna. The pictures of Krishna, which are the most sweet to my ear, are the songs of the Vaishnava Acharyas, because they are also descriptions of the spiritual world. There, there are so many. I mean, you have to go through the songbook and then you have to become amazed. Wow! How beautiful, how beautiful is all that. Krishna consciousness is really beautiful. Krishna is beautiful. He's Satyam Shivam Sundaram. And his material energy? Wow! Just look at this lake and forest with swans and ducks and everything is so beautiful. Even what the human beings have done is also beautiful. Beautiful castle, beautiful installations. So, I mean, in one way or another, everything seems to be quite beautiful. And that's what Krishna consciousness is. It's, it's the world of beauty. And it's the world of taste, it's the world of sweetness, and it's the world of love. Satyam Shivam Sundara. Satyam Truth. Shivam Auspiciousness and Sundara Beauty. And Srila Sridharaj was very fond of saying beauty, sweetness and love. They call it. Here we have another new story. The growing of pearls in Ma Malahari Kund. This is a new story. We, we, I just asked Gorangi in Switzerland to make a, make the story into a into a book for our children page because we have Tamoda our children page. Here's the story. Since the initial painting says going to be more, but because the story was very nice. First, Krishna asked Mother Yashoda, Mother Yashoda, please give me some pearls. You have such nice pearls. I want to plant them. And then we're going to have more pearls because they're so beautiful. Mother Yashoda said, No, Krishna, you cannot plant pearls. 
That's not the way how pearls come in this world. No harm, he said. Please give me pearls. I want to plant them. So he was nagging mother. Finally, mother couldn't refuse him. So she gave him some pearls. And Krishna took the pearls. Here you see this picture. Krishna is planting pearls. And he's He's putting milk on it, not water. It has to be special, so he's putting milk. No? There's the cow. Krishna is taking from the cow milk and then putting on the pearls. Then the gopis are coming and asking, Hey Krishna, what are you doing there? Here you see the gopis. Next, oh, this is the next story. Uh, so Krishna says, I'm growing pearls. The gopi said, oh, foolish boy you are. There's no pearls coming from growing pearls. Krishna says, you leave me alone. You're just going to be envious of my pearls. And then you're not going to get any for what you're saying. So and Krishna's making it very quickly then. Bushes are growing and giving pearls and pearls and pearls in big amounts and in all colors. Red pearls, blue pearls, green pearls, yellow, pink, all the pearl, pearl colors you can imagine. They are shining. And the gopi is looking. Oh no, no. Krishna is growing pearls. And then the gopi said, can we have some pearls also? I said, no, sorry, you not. You thought I will get thorns and not pearls. Now I cannot give you any pearls. You have offended the pearls. I'm growing. <laughs> and the gopi went home and says, Mom, please. Please, Mom, give us some, some pearls also. Krishna has been growing pearls. We want to grow pearls also. Mom, please. So the mother uh, reluctantly gives some pearls to the gopis, and the gopis, uh, they go and they plant the pearls in the soil, and they also uh, put some milk on it, following exactly Krishna's example, and some bushes grow very quickly, but the bushes only have thorns. No, not one pearl grows on that. Those bushes. And Krishna said, How is your pearls coming? And he said, No pearls. Oh, what do you mean? You know, what it was, what you're getting on your bushes? Thorns. Only thorns. Oh. So then, uh, when when Krishna sees that the gopis lost all their pearls and now they become very humble and they said, Oh Krishna, we are so sorry that we, 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 we spoke bad of your pearls planting. Could you please be so kind and give us some pearls? <laughs> Krishna says, Okay, okay, I give you. So this is one of the pictures, one of the lilas in Malahari Kunda. This, is, this place is now recovered by Srila Bodhai Maharaj and it will be restored to have a beautiful exhibit of this pastime there. So it's in Radhakunda, it's very close to Radhakunda, very beautiful little Kunda. So this is Vrindavan, it is the, the place of pictures, the place of Leelas. Everywhere, all the time, Krishna has Leelas, Krishna has beauty. Everything is there because that's what Krishna wants. And, and because of that, uh, he is creating a world which is continuously changing images. Krishna Lila is eternal, so it's always new, ever fresh. And still if you hear the Rasa Lila or any of those Lilas, they are always like fresh and sweet and beautiful. And that's actually the medicine for the devotees is to, to paint Krishna, to make sculpture of Krishna, to make drama with Krishna's Leela, 
to make, like yesterday we had this beautiful Mahabharata drama by the children. Very well done. Congratulations to the ones who made it. Really, really good. And all the children could think about the images because that's image. Now we, the word image also takes you to another word called imagination. And that is love means imagination. You have to have an imagination to make service. Because you have to create an image. Now, imagination may also be considered speculation. So we are not interested in imagining things which are false. But anything connected with Krishna is not false because the imagination will be inspired. It will be inspired inspiration, inspired imagination. And then it will be something created, like creative. It will be something constructive. It will be something elevated. And that is exactly what our spiritual master taught us. He said, make beautiful things for Krishna. This is, this is our, our, only, our only chance, our only hope, to do something very beautiful for Krishna. What else are we going to do? Are we going to make, sometimes you feel this, you see the modern art museums. <laughs> Oh my God, this is very harsh, very harsh to go to a modern art museum, really. Especially if you are kind of an artist yourself. Huh? It's just like the imagination of the artist is of such a type that they always have to imagine something more extreme, worse, uh, more provoking, challenging, and like there's no end to it. Hmm? Boys made fat egg. One of his art pieces was there was the big gallery, and he he put in one corner he put grease, like a gallery grease, just grease. A very interesting art piece, the, the fat egg. Called, no? uh, and there's other things which I won't tell you what they do in art, you know. I mean, horrifying art. Horror art is... And then we, of course, we run into danger because Hitler, he said the perverted arts and then he burned so many art pieces and burned books which he didn't agree with that they have any artistic content. So the, 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 the thing of burning art or condemning art, this, this has been a, this has been like one of the, practically speaking, every political system starts promoting some kind of art over the other, favoring one over the other. And that, that, that is really silly, you know, you have like the communist art, no? And the communist art is always like some, some, outcry against injustice and you have this and then finally you have the workers no strong workers well they, no we are working for the socialists and, la, 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 la. and this is like, like they, they have stereotype art fascism has a stereotype art communism has a stereotype art so what, what kind of images is this this is also painful to the eye but then the modern art, you call it modern art, modern art has no, no strings attached to it. it. It can be anything and it has to be always something new. And sometimes, you know, artistically, it may be very excellent. They may actually accomplish uh, very, very super things, but in the substance, well, they, 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 there is no substance. It's just like different degrees of expressions of disgust with the emptiness of this material existence. Uh, or maybe something else, or, or maybe they... You see in this material world that everything what the people do when there's no Krishna, it gets, it gets out of hand. It gets really out of hand. And it becomes something which is, is really nothing. It's really nothing. That's why they start to feel inclined. I, I give you 
and very unfortunate example, and people they watching what's not allowed to be watched. So then it's pornography. Now that everybody is pornography, finally they legalize pornography. So now watching pornography is becoming boring because it's already legal. Now they have to find child pornography. But that's illegal. So then they are interested in that. You always want to look at something which you're not supposed to look at. <laughs> It's, it's such a crazy world, the world of images, no? Mm -hmm. And then it gets even worse. It gets even worse. Mm -hmm. there, there was one guy in England, just came out in the newspaper recently. He, he said, well, for me to have my full sexual erosion, erosion or something, they, they, I have to torture you. It's kind of sadistic, no? It's kind of maso sadistic. We have heard of that. It's not even so uncommon. But he said, in the end, I have to kill you to get my full kick out of it. And she said, okay, do it. So he killed her. It just just came out in the, Oh yeah. Now we have a, the sexual uh, sensation of the killing of a woman. Well, I guess the, those who were witch hunters, they were uh, very much into that, no? They were into killing women and in this way uh, enjoy their perversion. My God, my God, Kali Yuga. This is the yeah. This is where this is where the images go when there is no God, when there is no divinity, when the the people are not uh, they're, they're hopeless and they become mad. So, in one sense, we have the most beautiful Satyam Shivam Sundaram. On the other side, you have to see the total disaster, the total violence, you know. What is it? Movies beauty nowadays. Helicopters exploding and, and uh, blood splattering right over the camera. They, they, this is the latest thing, you know. You, the, the guy shoots a guy and then the blood, when the guy like blows to pieces, it goes on the lens. No. So it's becoming so real, like his blood is spilling all over the lens. So, what the heck is this, you know? It's the material world is the images, you know? We need to recollect our positive, constructive images of love. That is Krishna consciousness, that is meditation. Meditation is not closing your eyes and rubbing your eyes if you see some colors, you know? Or, 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 or get any other imagine it. It, real, real art is not to, to have contact with, with ghosts. I mean, when, when you are worshipping ghosts, there's, there's a lot of images also going on. Very strange images, if you see that. I mean, how, how do you worship ghosts? And what is the ghost worship? What is the beauty of it? Huh? If you go and look at that, you look at the ghost worship, this is so terrible. Uh, and the more terrible it gets, the more bloody it also gets. In the beginning, you worship the ghost, oh, you're just doing some personal sacrifice, and, and then you're offering some cigar, and then you're offering some whiskey, and then the ghost says, no, I want a chicken. You please, you have to kill the chicken and put the put the, the blood over and then he said, no, I don't want a chicken, now I want a goat. And finally, as children, it, in the candomblé, candomblé is uh, one of the black magic, the voodoo things, it is perfectly accepted that the, the more higher offerings is a virgin girl has to be sacrificed. What the heck is that? What kind of images is this? Where, where the hell are we going when we get interested into this voodoo magic type of things? Sorry, you know, this is, this is nothing to do with sattva gun vishuddha sattva. Forget it. Forget it. You don't, you don't start your, uh, your uh, spirituality in any of this imaginary horror, horrific things like sometimes, you know, <laughs> You may see images of demon faces and all sorts of kind of things. Voodoo, 
can you, if you, if I've lived in Brazil many years, and then, and now it's not only Brazil, in India, you can get them. They're called Macumba stores. Mm? You can in, in go there and you can buy the prostitute, you can buy the Eshu. Eshu looks like the devil, no? One foot like a, 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 a goat, a goat foot one, and the tail, and the horns. You know, statues, small ones, big ones, like any size you want. You, know? you can take one of those temples and then you can worship through them. You can make like, there is, and, and it's a very confusing imagery too, because uh, when, these, when the voodoo and all that was underpressed by the Christians, uh, then they just took Christian images and substituted it. Like they have a ghost they call Eshu. Uh, and, and that is uh, supposed, it looks, he looks like Jesus, but he's not Jesus. No? They have, for each of their ghosts, they have a substitute. So the Christians are, oh, these guys worshiping Jesus. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's all became like, like a confusion in the images because no clarity whatsoever. But if you want to identify whether something is sattvic, rajasic, tamasic, mm, it's, very, it's very clear. We have a very clear, we have rajic, tamasic, we have it in the, uh, we have it in the, uh, we have it in the food, we have it in the art, we have it in the drama, we have it in the conversation. Krishna gives a full description. There's a whole chapter in Bhagavad Gita. What is Rajasic? What is Tamasic? What is Sadvic? And we can't get it. We think that something where people get confused, lose their mind, get all kinds of strange concept, contact with ghosts and all such kinds of things. Oh, now they're getting something higher. <laughs> yeah, very smart, you know? Very smart, I must say. Huh? I mean, the, the, the whole concept now, now don't think that the ghosts are so foolish. The ghosts, they, they offer you things. The ghosts, they, in order to entertain yourself, they give you some certain nectar, some, some sensations, or for example, they can tell you the future. The ghosts, because they're subtle or suddenly power, they can read the mind of another person. They can do things. They, they, it's not they have no powers. Why do you think people worship ghosts? Yanti Bhuta, uh, because when you, Bhuta Nishanti Bhuta, you worship the ghost because they give you something and then you have to pay with your own life, with your own soul, you become a ghost. Somebody dies in the intoxication, he becomes a ghost. Prabhupada says it very clearly. It's a, it's a well-known factor. You want to risk that? You want to become a ghost? So, for example, uh, Goethe, Zauberlehrling, you know? he says, the spirits which I called, now I can't get rid of them. Once you call them, once you invite them into you, you become indebted with them. You create a, a, a lesion, and then they are on your neck, on your neck all the time. You need me. Hmm? So, and that's why the, in Faust it says, here's the Zauberlehrling. And for learning the magic, what he has to do? For learning the magic, he has to sell his soul to the devil. And who's the devil? Well, we are all devils. When we are not Krishna conscious, then we become devils. It's not that there's some devil to be blamed out there. We are all the nice, fine guys, but out there there's this terrible devil who wants to catch us. No. We all have the devil inside of us. We are all potential devils. But when you want to get certain things, then you have to sell your soul to the devil. This is a, this is a Western concept, but it's not wrong. Therefore, 
Krishna says, whatever, whoever you think of at the moment of death, that state you will achieve. Whatever state you think of in the moment of death, there you will go. So you want to go to the Tamaguna region, you want to go to the, to the region of the, of the spirits and the Gandharvas and the, and, and, and the demigods. No, we don't want to go to Swarga. Can you imagine? Swarga. We don't want to take Somaras with the demigods. Hmm? We don't want that. It's not our idea. Our idea is Anya Vilasita Sunyam Gyana Karmadi Anavritam Anukulyana Krishna Nushilanam Bhakti Uttama. We want to reject karma and jnana. What? Karma? What's wrong with karma? What about karma yoga, karma kanda? Yes? It's there in the Vedas. And what is our bhakti concept of them? We reject it. We don't want to make business with God. We don't want to say, Lord of my heart, I offer you 1,000 arctics and you let me win the lottery, okay? We don't want to make this type of business with God. Some people promote this. Some people promote, you go to God for things. You ask Him this, you ask Him that. And they think, oh, that's a great idea. And God has... You think this is a beautiful place? You know, we are middle of Germany, Kali Yuga, and so beautiful. Can you imagine what Swarga looks like? What the, the heavenly planets look like? Can you imagine the, the, the concerts when they play music and when they make drama there? I mean, I've seen some far dramas, you know, but whatever's going on in Swarga, it is it's mind blowing, completely out of range for us. We try to imitate, we try to make some beauty, but we don't really know what is beauty. We forget that the only real beauty in, in, in this world is the sincere and loving smile. That's beautiful. If you don't smile, your face looks ugly. <coughs> Just look, look at yourself. You don't smile, immediately you look ugly. You start smiling, smile. Yes, immediately it becomes beautiful. <laughs> Just by smiling, if not, not the salesman smile. Smith says, hmm. that's a little different. You know, they smile only to sell you something. As soon as you don't buy anything, you know, <laughs> idea, no? don't waste my time. Hmm. So, in other words, here we have images, and Krishna is Smita Krishna. Krishna is smiling Krishna. And Prabhupada smiles at us to get us into Krishna consciousness. He doesn't smile when you're in Tamagun. <clears throat> Prabhupada doesn't smile. Prabhupada's not happy when his disciples go to crazy things, speculative things, dangerous things. He's not happy with that. He's not happy when one devotee deals roughly with another devotee. Not at all. Prabhupada doesn't authorize that. He doesn't want that. Robert wants something beautiful for his devotee. So beautiful he wants. Because Prabhupada loves his devotees. So much love is there. And that is the beauty we are looking for. Beauty, sweetness and love. Come on. Beauty, sweetness and love, this is Krishna consciousness. We are not after ugliness. We are not looking of horrible images. You know, you know some, some, some people, they, they go into ghost experiences. You know what I'm referring to? 
taking intoxication and then you see all kinds of ghostly things and you don't know, you may meet demons there, you may get scared, you may get paranoias, you, you do all kinds of things, you don't even know where you're going, you don't know where you're going, you don't know what happens afterwards. And then some people, they speculate, they say, oh, I can also do that, make some money with that. Do you know where that takes you? Do you realize what happens? If somebody's getting involved in such things and you encourage them to, you get a full reaction for that. <coughs> it's just like selling drugs. When you sell drugs and you make people drug addicted so that you make money from them, you get the reaction, the karmic reaction. It's just like you rob a bank or you 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 take the money away from an old lady who came out out from the bank bringing her pension home and you snatch her, her 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 bag so that you can go out and smoke dope or something with her money something like that you're taking other people into futures you do not even know about you have no control about you only know one thing it's tamaguna it's Tamaguna because it's Tamaguna and you can know. It's not so difficult to know what is Tamaguna because that's what the scriptures already explain what is Tamaguna. The, the scriptures are not leaving us in. You say, oh, I tried it once, I tried it twice and I'm still alive. Yes? You're still alive, but where are you going afterwards? And what happened with the damage you do here and here and here? Don't tell me there's no damage, because I've seen the damage. I've seen the damage. I have the wife there, the child. Where's the husband? He died. How did he die? He was taking ayahuasca. And he started vomiting and nobody watched him. And he died in his own vomit. He, 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 he got fixed and could not breathe anymore. There's the girl, there's the child. Who's going to be responsible for that? The guy who sold the ayahuasca to him? The guy who encouraged him for that? Who's going to take the responsibility? Karmic responsibility. Do you still believe in karma? Do you still believe there's action and there's a reaction? You see this? We are playing around with our human form of life like something, oh well I got 500 human form of life, why not waste one? Huh? Why not? We are, we are eternal, so let's play around. But why did Prabhupada come? He came to save us from our speculation. He came to save us from our tamaguna. He came to take us out and to take us back to Goloka. And he can do so. Why? Well, he gave us the images of beauty, sweetness and love. He gave us the images of the life. He gave us the teachings. Be nice with each other, serve others, go on Sankirtan, or do anything good for others. For God's sake, do anything good for others. If you are not a Sankirtan man, if you are not giving lectures, if you are not making art, if you are not making drama, if you are not making anything good for others, well then just cook and give somebody prasadam who has never eaten prasadam, but do something good for others. My presentation is confirmed by the Supreme Personality of God. Just I'm in connection with him.